wrapping up part three here. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't even know what all I did. Stuff took so long, just waiting on glue to dry and things like that. Um, I got the Shrink RC 3D printed door panels for the square bodies. And got the color close, didn't get the exact right color. Um, the lid of the can looked exactly like the seats in the dash, but what came out was a little lighter, but it's not bad. And you can barely see them in there, but if you look, it's there. Painted some details on the door panels. Got the interior mounted in and uh, added a brace across the bottom because the way it's set up with the blazer, it mounts outside of the cab area, the rear mounting port portion of it. So there was nothing really holding it in, so I uh, glued some scrap styrene to the bottom of the seat or the interior and uh, drilled and used some holes with some self-tapping RC hardware into the bottom of the door panels, which perfectly aligned with the bottom of the interior. So interior is in there nice and solid. Um, got the body all squared away, got it spaced out. We brought the front up a little bit. Um, if you could tell in, back in part two, it you could see it was kind of broken in the middle just a little bit. It was sitting a little too low in the front. Now the body is, I'd say, a quarter inch below the bottom of the chassis. So our rockers are what will drag first. <laughs> But I'm really, really happy with this. It's still, it's a nightmare to take this body on and off. So we definitely have got to come up with a battery mount for the inside the bed. Um, we still got a lot of stuff to do as far as electronics goes. We got nothing in it. But the body does not need to come off for batteries. So <laughs> that's the main thing. Uh, I've been thinking a little bit ahead, like trying to figure out if there's like some kind of scale engine or something we can mount. Let me show you under the hood. So we've got lots of room for activities in here. Um, our shock tower and body mount post are well below, or even below the top of the tire. So we could do some kind of engine cover, throw us the LS in here or something. We'll just have to see. I like the clean look. I don't want stuff sticking to the hood on this. I'm kind of building this as if I, how I want to build a real one. Just a patina truck, a driver, shop truck. Low vintage look little bit of rust here and there <laughs> but a lot of versatility we've got plenty of room in the steering um, I do need to come back and trim our front body mount there's no way I can get the camera in there that angle piece of aluminum that we use from the grill mount to the chassis um, the tire full lock does hit the corner of it so we just need to cut down the edges of that a little bit a few little odds and ends to take care of it the steering is in there it has plenty of clearance the servo is underneath the passenger floorboard in the stock location pretty much but it, we use that little micro servo we got that all tucked away we got plenty of room underneath this side and behind the servo as well for receiver and ESC and uh, yeah motor will mount in the stock location I'll show you the bed situation that's the next thing we have to address so it should clear I don't know we may have to trim more of this out for the motor right there but I've got the gearbox cover back in the motor mount plate is right there and yeah Plenty of room there. We can throw the ESC there, have the wire come through. We don't have a drive shaft because it's rear wheel drive only now, so we can have our wires come around here and make us a little battery box up top. And the biggest thing I need to do still is to make a bed cover because I've cut this bed floor all up over the years of trying to fit it on other things. And uh, yeah, it's just ugly. So unfortunately, we won't be showcasing our bed floor. You know, it could do a step over it, but if I have to cut this out for the motor, then it goes all the way to here, and then battery placement. So I think I'm going to try to make a bed cover out of styrene. I don't currently have any sheets big enough for this bed, but I'm going to make some structure underneath it and make it where it's actually hinged so we can just pop the tailgate, get in there, and change our battery out when we need to. But, uh, yeah, again, there's a lot of, what do we got, four, five, six screws four spacers just to get the body on the front screws have to have nuts going through the they're on the back side of the bolts so it's very tedious to get this thing apart i whooped up a little rear license plate mount out of one of those i think that was the servo box uh, i just needed something with an angle and i don't have any sheet metal here that i can find so i couldn't get a little piece of angle or something so i just use that plastic for now because i don't have a rear bumper I can't find my rear bumper and my inner tailgate piece, which I don't really need if we're going to do bed cover and hide the bed. But I know I've got it. It's already painted tan. It'd be real quick just to weather it and glue it in. I'm missing the handle, too. When I know this isn't the right 
handle situation for a pickup. This is a Blazer tailgate, obviously, but it's the only one we've got, so this is what we're going to roll with. And it had been painted so badly, it's why I never weathered it, because it had uh, kind of spiderweb and did a whole bunch of bad stuff. And, uh, yeah, just weathered over it. I was really proud of myself with the tail lights. I was a little frustrated because I posted a picture of the tail lights on Instagram and uh, stuff like that. And everybody in the comments, you should have bought this, you should have bought that. And I was like, I'm working with what I got here. And I took the time and masked off a little rectangle for the reverse light, which there's no provision for on these stock tail lights. And it worked out and it didn't bleed through, painted the lenses and everything. So I was, I was real happy with that. And I did things on purpose. I didn't have enough screws. I'm, I'm piecing together the hardware kit for this body has been moved and separated and used and stuff. So I had about five screws and needed eight. Found a couple that would work. Left one out. It's a shop truck. It's not a not a show truck. So I just little things like that. But I was really happy with how the tail lights come out because I'm notoriously bad with paint bleeding and things like that happening. So for that to work out was a big win. Get you a little look at those door panels. They're pretty nice. It's good affordable stuff that's 3d printed um, I did use a two-part epoxy to glue them to the inside of the cab and they are contoured to fit so they really only fit in one spot and they cover the uh, body clip and stuff for the mirror so it's it's pretty nice fitment I was not disappointed with those it looks good completed the look the interior on this I liked it was clean and simple but it was missing those door panels and that that really sealed the deal um, if you saw also, I had an issue with the back wall. So we did yeah. this, this body was done oh, six or seven years ago, and nobody had 3D printed stuff to do it, so we actually had to hack up two blazers, and the back wall is just, it looks like four mil styrene, and I used the back wall with that piece of aluminum you saw me modify to, uh, that was how it mounted on the ramp truck. The body slid into some holes on the ramp truck chassis and slid back, and then put two screws in the front and the body was locked. So over the time of pulling that body on and off, it actually ripped the ding Lexan back wall. But uh I added some more Lex or some more styrene, Lexan. It ripped the styrene up. So I added some more stuff in there, glued it in, drilled all the holes and kind of reinforced it a little bit. The bed is very well reinforced. It's got, you know, like that little trim piece in the front and Stuff like that. So there's five screws holding the cab and the bed together and I added that aluminum piece in as part of the spacers to keep the gap right. And it also, I cut it a little bit too big, but it's just kind of there to keep the middle from sagging. And uh, it's working alright. It's not really an issue. Because having the bed post, or the body post here on the bed and at the back, it keeps everything locked real nice and, and stiff. So we're not going to get that <laughs> body mount sag like you do in a lot of real trucks. But, um, yeah, just needs a little fine-tuning, but next up, I'm going to do this bed cover thing. Hopefully, I can find the rest of the little odds and ends I need. If not, it's not a big deal. I'm not that worried about it. Again, like I said, I'm building this for for me. If this was a real truck I had to work at the shop with and run parts and do all that, so pretty happy. I was talking with someone, I think it was on comments and YouTube, but uh, I kind of felt like I was cheating because I've been wanting, I've been sitting on this truck body forever. Like I said, five or six years, seven years, it's been a while. And I, I wanted to build a full chassis and do a full rear axle and stuff like the rat rods have. And there's just, it's always a pain with the front end. Because the front truck's got an independent front in real life. And then you're hacking touring car with fabricated stuff and without having access to design and 3D print stuff. And, you know, that, that would make it a lot easier. Where I could actually make a mount piece to fit whatever arms I use to whatever chassis I've come up with. But I don't have that ability. Uh, a lot of people think because I use so much 3D printed stuff that I design and print. I don't. I've, I've tried it. Not my cup of tea. I'm rust, fire, and hammers all the way. So, yeah. This, I felt like I was cheating. But I've been real into the touring car stuff again. I mean, I grew up with the Tamiya on road. And I've got a pretty good collection going here of vintage stuff. And this chassis I couldn't sell. Nobody was interested in buying. So it just worked out. But the only problem is now, I am i wasn't real into this build at first because of that. And now I'm in love with it because it's looking good. It's sitting right. And it, it's actually going to drive fantastic. I'm kind of excited about that part. But now i got to look at spending money on the chassis. Because <laughs> this chassis doesn't even have ball bearings. And I want it to 
you know, it, it's kind of the best of both worlds. I get my scale patina, full interior stuff, and I get my vintage, well, kind of vintage touring car, and you know, you get lost in all the aluminum goodies and all that fun stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see where this takes us. But so far, I'm pleased. And like I said, the next part is going to be bed cover, electronics, test drives, and a few little odds and ends. And hopefully, that should be it. We can wrap it up. And, uh, yeah. But anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Appreciate y'all watching. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully see y'all out there at some events this year. Keep scale, and I'll see y'all next time.